Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is we discuss coaching, psychological and emotional related topics in an audio format, usually on a daily basis or pretty close to it. Uh, we've got over 450 audio uh, up and available for you to check out, so that is hopefully helpful. Um, and if you would like to work with somebody on today's topic or any topic on the channel, really, there's today's topic are dating red flags. If you're getting back into relationships, haven't dated in a while, have anxiety around the concept of dating or anything like that, there's two ways to get in contact with me. First, on Twitter, at PO Perception, or secondly, you can reach out um, uh, through the About Me section of this YouTube page, and there is a website there. You go there and uh, reach out that way. In any event, um, dating red flags are a thing, and certainly um, kind of looking at these things can be uh, super important. If a person's extremely needy or possessive during the early stages of dating, um, then chances are you want to avoid them. Unfortunately, this can become problematic for people who have issues with love addiction or relationship dependency, which I would say is at least a good one-third of most of Western culture. The uh, preoccupation with romance that is purported to children and then purported to things like television and music can often make a person who isn't relationship ready susceptible when someone love bombs them and gives them um you know that that the warm fuzzy feeling and they kind of jump into a relationship status or look to jump into relationship status to cover things within themselves so neediness on either side if you find yourself to be excessively needy because you're trying to heal from something else or if you find your potential partner to be um, excessively needy, these can, these can be warning signs. Um, the next is laziness and lack of consideration. So obviously you don't want someone to offer to do everything for you. Autonomy and independence is important in every relationship, friendship, family, or dating scenario. However, if a person isn't inspired enough upon, um, you know, upon understanding what your needs are or learning what your needs are and they're not willing to do something simple like um, walk across the room and get you a, a glass of water or um, you know maybe listen when you've had a bad day just simple things that you would do for another human being just out of the concept of being kind and nice and 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 time time aware and sensitive to people's needs then chances are dating them probably not going to be in your best interest. Here's the reality. People can change. Every person is capable of change, but few. I would say as low as somewhere between 10 to 20 percent, 20 on the high side, 10 on the low side, actually do change. The desire to change has to come from within the individual. And if you believe that your brand of love or care is going to change another person, you're setting yourself up for the potential of failure because that's generally not how change works. And I know people would like to believe that it is, but if a person's lazy or inconsiderate, they're not just going to become considerate because you exist in most the majority of cases. Next is comfort of, of sex drive. So obviously physical attraction is a part of the dating relationship. Some, some people it's more, some people it's less, but it's there for the majority of people unless they have, for example, they're asexual or they have other challenges, physical, mental, or emotional, that make sexuality difficult. But understanding the standards with your partner about what sexual expectations are, both in the long and, and short term of the relationship, is necessary for a good dating scenario. Nothing can be more frustrating than having a high libido and low libido person trying to work out the dance of what's appropriate for them. Also, what you're comfortable with from a partner and where and where your boundaries are should be established long before you actually get to the act of, of physicality because otherwise any positive progress related to the development of an emotional connection can be negatively affected when physical boundaries are pushed too quickly or too hard. Um, the next is the level of confidence a person has. Now this can be extremely difficult because confidence and ego is often hard for people to discern. 
Ego is the belief that a person has nothing left to learn. Confidence is the belief that they have something to learn, but they also have something to offer. So confident, a confident person is balanced in their realization that they are a growing individual who wants to include a person in their life to continue to grow with them and build with. But um, there's challenges as it relates to the idea of when a person's ego-based, that is when they are more concerned about how they're going to benefit from a relationship or how they're going to benefit from a situation, and that's continual. Now, we all have a day where, you know, I'm really proud of myself and I want extra pats on the back or I've had a really bad day and I need extra support. But when ego becomes the center of how people relate, especially in a dating relationship, that's a major red flag. Um, the next thing to consider uh, which is also valuable, is the, the amount of self-care. So how a person cares for themselves is, is very indicative of how they'll care for you. So if it's hard for them to get up and shower, if it's hard for them to uh, eat well, sleep well, and, and maintain a schedule, if it's hard for them to manage their time, and it affects how other people see them, if they're not taking care of their daily life, then it's going to be increasingly difficult for them to manage and take care and grow a relationship. And again, what happens especially for women in the, let's say, under 35 age group, and even more so for teenagers, is they'll think, well, if, if he was loved, if he or she was loved the right way, then they'll change. Now, that's not to say it doesn't happen with men, but it generally is a thought process uh, more so for women historically and so that again is is a falsehood that we want to believe because we want to believe we have that level of influence but um facts and research show differently the last is the level of activity now activity can mean physical exercise but it can also mean just enjoying new experiences in life um and so if a person is not very active and they're kind of a homebody and you are an active-minded person that's not going to be a good relationship. And similarly, if you're a homebody and someone's going to constantly push your limits to go out two, three, four times a week, again, not going to be in your best interest. Um, anyway, so hopefully this is helpful. I, I encourage you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.